Good evening, Liberia. It's Carol Ann in Canada. I'm here to pick up on my story that I started a while ago about how King David wanted to make a temple for the Lord. And God said no to him. He said no. David, from the time you're a young man, you're being involved in war, in killing, in blood and bloodshed and all the rest. He said no. Thou going to be Solomon, your son, who will, do, who will build a temple, not you. And so after David adjusted his thinking to this, he got up and he started to prepare the way for Solomon to make Solomon successful in what he was called to do. <laughs> oh my, what a wonderful father, eh? Preparing for his son in his old age to make his son successful. He set all his own previous dreams down, knowing that God was not in the dream. You know, sometimes we have dreams and aspirations and we have vision. Last time I spoke to you, I was talking about vision. Sometimes we have good things on our mind, but it's not for God's plan for us. Not God's plan for us at all. Let's really learn from David on that one. But now let's move ahead in the story. You know, when David had passed away and now Solomon came in and he was getting ready to build a temple. You know, it says in 1 Kings chapter 6, and I think it's verse 7, that at the time of the building of the temple, everything was done at the quarry where the stones were being cut. They did it in such a way that everything requiring cutting tools and hammering and making noise, using tools of metal, everything, all of it was done off site at the quarry. When it was all done, they transported those big rocks and stones that they were going to use to build the entire temple. They transported it to the building site and the building was put up in silence. No tool was heard. I'm sure you could hear people talking, but no tool was heard. There's a verse in Habakkuk that says, the Lord is in his temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. That temple that was being built was known as Solomon's temple. It was a marvelous construction. People who saw it and who enjoyed going there, oh my goodness, they had no words to describe it. In fact, there was another queen. She wasn't living right there. She was a queen of another far country, the queen of Sheba. <laughs> And way off in her country, she heard about Solomon's temple. And not only that, but all the other things that King Solomon was doing in Israel. She said, I'm going to go see, oh, I'm going to go see. So she got her camels and whatever else she needed to use to get to travel there. And the lady came traveling from a distance to see it. She came and she said to Solomon, she said, oh, Half of it, half of it was never even told to me. She was not disappointed. She went away realizing that in her imagination, even half of it had not been told of the glory and the magnificence of the buildings that were going up and the temple was among those. Next time, we will get the next part of the story. What happened? What happened to that marvelous temple? <laughs> Until then, you'll get your Bibles out and start to read in 1 Kings. Bye for now.